Hey guys, this is Philip, and uh, today I'm going to be showing you something I've been working on. Um, basically, it's similar to my third person game I did a while back, uh, but uh, this is basically a first person shooter with some of the code from the previous one. But uh, basically, on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an in depth tutorial of it and uh, I'm just finishing editing it now so I can upload it and it's quite a long tutorial, it's going to be about four hours I know it's a long time but basically this will give you everything you need to start your own first person shooter so you will have all the basics done so AI code, um, you have weapons, you have movement collisions, animations you have some um, use of sparkies which is a collision um, library I think and uh, you'll have some other debug things that will help you out so I'm just going to show you this now then okay so this is pretty much it um, so um, the thing I was telling you about 1400 lines was all that it took to build all this so as you can see you can shoot you can walk I'm getting a few low frames but um, when you do play this yourself you'll be getting no less than 60 frames per second obviously unless you got a really old computer because I never get less than 60 um, basically as you can see here you've got the enemies spawning there's only four spawn spots at the moment when you do if you do write this yourself uh, you will probably have your own map and you can have any spots you like um, for spawns uh, you can see in the top left corner there's the ammo counter and then you've got the um, health as well and the enemies uh, they spawn every five seconds or so I mean you can adjust that yourself and uh, you can have a maximum uh, I think I set mine to 60 so it's not too bad um, I've ended up with a maximum of 80 I think without any problems uh, I've never tried any more than that but I'm pretty sure I can handle it quite well uh, so you can as I said you can shoot you've got the bullets uh, you can reload as you can see up there changing um, you can annoy enemies so if I do shoot one he's not going to be too happy there you go, shot him, he's coming after me as you can see so this isn't like really in-depth AI code or anything it's just fairly simple stuff so <coughs> as you can see here so also obviously I'm going to give you all these models in a thingy in a um, in a zip file for download so it should be in this first video in the description box um, and uh, obviously you can't sell the game because uh, I think pretty much none of these models are mine except for the map so that's how good of a designer I am. Um, so yeah, obviously neither of us can sell this. You can maybe build upon it and so on and then make your own models later on and sell it if, if you like. I don't know, up to you. So as you can see this guy's after me. He's hit me. So so there's full collision going on. So if I move back as he's about to hit me, I dodge his attack. And if he does hit me, there you go. He hits me. But anyways, so you can go against things like this. So there you go. Collision. You can't. I can't run to, uh, through the enemy. That's not going to happen. He's hitting me now. I'm going to kill him. So there you can kill him. Um, this this is all detected quite nicely with Sparkies. That's, so that's the only collision thing you'll need. Uh, just going to annoy another one. So you can kill him. So as you can see, this one, for example, you got 50-50 chance of dropping ammo. So if I go there, I get some ammo. Um, so I think this is about it. I mean, for... Gonna get some ammo here. Another thing that happens is I'll show you in a second. The system I put in. Let's kill that one as well. So that's what happened with these enemies here. If you walk near them, if they, if you go in their line of sight, they come after you immediately. So that's a lot of enemies now. So I'm not sure I'll be able to kill them all. But um, another thing you can do is um, they're hitting me now, but. Just gonna try and get away from them. Basically, they're gonna kill me. There's nothing I can do about that. But uh, there you go. They killed me. So in this example, when you die, you um everything freezes. So as you can see, um, whoever killed me just stands there now and they all stand still so basically there's also one thing that happens when you press no, uh, F1 you go into no clip mode which is what I'm on at the moment um, as you can see I can look around the map at any time and so on <coughs> and I think this is about it uh, from from what I can 
teach you from the tutorial here, or at least give you the code for, is uh, enough to build a, your whole game. Um, and then all you got to do is just add stuff, add stuff onto it, and um, it should be quite good overall. Um, as I didn't take any silly shortcuts or anything, so it's a pretty solid foundation for a game, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, I'm not an expert. I've only been doing this for about a year and a half, but uh, every time I needed help with a first-person shooter or whatever, there was never like a decent tutorial about. So that's what I'm having to go at doing one. Um, let me see what did I forget. So also, most people see things that can be improved with this code, um, and I'm sure they can because I've seen some as well after doing them. But um, I'm only doing this. I'm trying to go for simplicity, and I'm not doing this to prove anything, I'm just simply trying to help people that want to do a first person shooter in GDK because um, obviously there's people that are doing, are doing stuff in DirectX and that's very difficult and I'm not good enough to do that yet um, so yeah, that's about it um, I recommend you watch this in 1080p because um, it took me a long time to uh, render these videos and everything um, in 1080p so it'd be useless not to watch it if you can't um, and that's pretty much it. So you've got yourself a game here with AI code, bullet collisions, movement collisions, animations. You've got weapons, and um, that's pretty much it. So I think it's a pretty good foundation for a game. Uh, if you got any improvements, decent improvements for it, maybe um, if you let me know, I'll probably change them to the final code. Uh, but I don't know yet. So I uh, thanks for watching, and uh, let me know how the tutorial goes for you. Okay guys, so uh, some things you're going to need for this tutorial. Um, obviously you're going to need uh, Visual Studio 2008 Express Edition or I think the other edition, but make sure it's 2008 or you're going to have a lot of problems with it. Okay, um, I can't really help you with the tutorial for that, but I'll put, um, if you have your annotations, and I'll put a few up um, or in the description I'll put um, one of the ones I used to initially set up the uh, Dark GDK and uh, something I can help you with is Sparkies which is the the collision library we're going to use uh, basically you uh, I'll put a link up as well so you can uh, come here and this is where you download it from so just download this version here which is for GDK and what you do it with it once you do have it so I'm just going to download it so once you do have it, you have these few files here. So uh, you got samples, all that good stuff. So if you want to go through some of the samples, put this in a separate folder and do use it. And you have the lib file uh, folder, and uh, which has a library file. And you have another folder called include. So what you do with this, I'll show you where I've my where I've got mine. So basically, here is where I've got my. You put your include file here. So. Uh, so you go here and get the include file and as you can see I've got mine here so my folder I've got it in C program files the game creators dark GD can include and I've got just put that there okay and there's our uh, collision done and then we go for the lib file I'm just gonna go back here now and then just open file location and my file location is in this folder here so dark gdk lib vs9 and then you put the library file there so when you do load um, I'm assuming most of you have got gdk already installed with uh, Visual Studio but um, just put that there and when you do run Visual Studio you should be able to include SC collision uh, so that it works and everything's okay alright so that's I can't really help you with the installation for, I did want to but it would have taken like 20 minutes extra and I'm already making this tutorial very long so we'll get on with the actual programming now hey guys uh, Philippe here and uh, we're gonna start the, um, the tutorial now so first thing you wanna do uh, you wanna go new project and you wanna go dark GDK game um, so I'm calling mine um, my FPS 2 because uh, second time I'm trying this as um, my first go I had a few problems with it um, mainly because I'm just making stupid errors but anyways so my FPS 2 I'm calling mine and then uh, first thing you do is click on main 2 alright so I'm just going to delete some of this pointless text because uh, it's mostly common sense um, okay so first thing you want to do um, is actually you want to put uh, make sure you download the files uh, required folder from the um, there's there should be a link on the um, on the um, 
you know whatever and to mediafire and you should be able to download the uh, .zip file from there um, and um, you'll have the file that will come a bit like this first thing you want to do after creating your project you want to go to the projects um, in my case it will be testing grounds which is what I call it um, and I will be my FPS2 my FPS2 again and you want to do it right here usually you'd have a debug folder but doing the same folder as your main is at so put like that just put all these one two three four five folders in there so that should be it you've put your files there now you should be able to access them that quite nicely so now let's start the actual code writing so basically first bit you, first thing you want to do is you want to include sparky's uh collision system um, I'll try and give brief explanations of everything I do, but uh, I will try and avoid staying on something for too long because this is going to be a fairly long tutorial. Uh, so, now what we want to start by doing is we want to define the map, the character, and a few other things. Um, so, character equals to, so we can load the objects. We don't have to do this, but this is a clean way of doing it, I guess. Sphere cam. Sphere cam, we're going to use to. Um, to position in front of the player and we'll use it as a camera to uh, rotate the main cam and all that so this is probably going to be our, our view into the game first person view so um, then we want to do uh, float vx equals zero now these variables are to know where the player is at all times so they're very useful float uh, vz and they'll also be used to update the collision system with Sparky's and you have float gravity also equals minus 0.05 f float slope slope is for those of you that are interested in having a map like a terrain for example 0.5 slope it's a little typo there so yeah um, and then we've got float radius which is going to equal 7.0 f so Every now and then, if you see me having uh, a cutscene or two, is because I may be looking back at the old code, uh, making sure I didn't do anything wrong, or if I'm stuck on something, because there's quite a few lines to remember, uh, so I can't guarantee I'll remember everything. But if you see a few cutscenes, because I spent a bit of time just making sure I knew what I was doing, to make sure you guys don't make mistakes um, following me. So um, I think for now, this is okay. We'll, we'll get on with the other ones in a second but for now just do these variables it might look a little bit weird at first for you um, but they're definitely useful so first thing we're going to go for is doing first we're going to start the sparks collision system uh, C start if we don't have this nothing's going to work for sparky so then we turn the back um, drop off I think this I, I use this. I'm not sure why, but I think it's because I was getting some graphical problems. Uh, backdrop off, but uh, you might get away without needing it. But uh, I wanted to use it anyway, just in case. Let's get I get screwed over, and then we got DB auto cam off. Now this is necessary because um, when you are spawning enemies and stuff, uh, if without auto cam off, the camera will go straight to them. So as the enemies are spawning the camera will keep moving to them that's just the way it works when a new object is spawned it will um, move the camera to that object and then back you know if if you're updating it so you don't want that you want the camera always at your main player so you turn that off uh, so then you got set display mode now this sets your resolution um, 